Today we have a rather non-traditional battle. The DJI Osmo Pocket versus the Canon M50. Both are labeled and marketed as vlogging cameras. One is a more traditional DSLR shaped mirrorless camera and the other is trying to be an all-in-one package, which remarkably also includes the gimbal. Which one will work best as a vlogging slash online content creation camera? Let's find out. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So these two cameras are quite polarizing in their own way. The Canon M50 was released earlier this year to pretty harsh reception when people figured out its 4K was usable but severely limited. Once the gnawing and gnashing of teeth subsided, I think it's turned into one of the strongest cameras of the year, and personally, it's it's one of my favorites. The Osmo Pocket, on the other hand, is a strange but potentially awesome beast of a camera that can do up to 4K 60 frames per second, has a built-in gimbal, also has a front-facing screen, and can automatically track your face. It's like the little Terminator that tracks you down no matter where you are, uh, or where you swing your arm. That. That sounded better in my head. <laughs> All that's cool every day, Dad, but why even make this video? Well, thanks for asking. You always know the questions to lead off a good video. Frankly, it's because both are considered vlogging cameras, and while the Osmo Pocket starts off at $349, once you buy all the accessories that unlock its full potential, you are looking at the same price as the M50. So it seems natural to compare the two based on price point, not on uniqueness. But just in case this is your very first video where you've seen either camera, which I don't know, could happen. Welcome to the Everyday Dad. Let's cover the basic specs to get us all on the same page. And quick disclaimer, this is super important since you know a regular camera has come in. I'm not a photographer, nor am I a professional videographer. I make home videos and you know, these YouTube videos. So we'll be covering the video specs that matter most to the regular person and regular people use video, not photos. Come on, regular people, video. Let's make today backwards day. What? I've got a six-year-old that says that stuff all the time, so it gets in it gets in my head too. The DJI Osmo Pocket is a shockingly small, seriously, have you held one of these yet? Camera gimbal hybrid. It has a one over two-thirds inch CMOS sensor and can record in up to 4K 60 frames per second which is still nuts to say. Its field of view is roughly equivalent to a 26 millimeter focal length on a 35 millimeter full frame camera. Camera speak, it's, it, it's pretty tight. And again, is stabilized with its own gimbal. It also has a non-removable 875 milliamp hour battery that should give you roughly an hour and a half of recording time. Though something I found out is you can have it plugged into an external battery in use, thus extending that time. The Canon M50 is also shockingly small for a full featured mirrorless camera. I mean, look look at that. It comes equipped with a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. That's almost the same size as the entirety of the pockets. Look at this. The sensor is almost the same size as the Osmo Pocket's entire camera. Under the hood is the Canon Digic 8 image processor. This allows recording in up to 4K 24 frames per second, but that 4K comes with a huge crop and loss of the dual pixel autofocus. And mentioning that, the big one, the autofocus. It has Canon's class leading dual pixel technology, which just makes everything in life so much. Everything needs to have dual pixel autofocus. This camera I wish had dual pixel autofocus. Physically, both cameras are some of the smallest you can find in their category. The Osmo Pocket is crazily small. I mean, when you have it out, it is hard to actually tell that you're recording anything, which is a pretty big benefit. I got rid of my big camera because it just drew too much much darn attention. When you have little cameras, nobody cares. When you have big cameras, suddenly it's an issue. The Canon M50, on the other hand, is also incredibly small for a DSLR style mirrorless camera. Seriously, after this video, go to wherever you shop for your cameras and see if you can hold both. They pack so much good stuff into these tiny bodies, it's crazy. The Osmo Pocket also has a few tricks up its sleeve, like incredibly fast boot up time and a front facing screen that lets you frame yourself while using it, which is rare in the small form camera think action camera, mark it. Not only that, but while you use it in a vlogging setting, it will track your face, making sure you stay in frame, which is pretty neat. And when you attach it to a cell phone, which we'll talk about here in a second, you can offset it and it will track you offset. It also has an ingenious little connection on the front that allows for easy pairing with a smartphone to unlock its more advanced features. But for purposes of this video, I, for me personally, I want it as small as possible, so I don't use it with the phone very often. The M50 has some of these staples of the vlogging standard. It has Canon's amazing autofocus, a flip out screen that just rocks, 
And most important from my perspective is the microphone in jack. But that's enough talking at the cameras. It's time to assemble the nitty gritty camera committee and judge these two based on the three most important aspects of a camera ever. I don't know why my hands are up here. First up, image quality. When it comes to image quality, we do need to mention a few things right off the bat. More resolution does not necessarily equal better footage. YouTube. For example, the Osmo can go up to 4K 60 frames per second, while the M50 can really only reliably be used for up to 1080p 60 frames per second. However, having that much larger sensor and better image processor will make that 1080p footage look better in non-optimal conditions. Anything can look great in perfect lighting, but having the bigger sensor and access to a bunch of lenses, we'll cover that later in a, we'll cover that in a later section, I think can produce a more pleasing image than just throwing more resolution at it. I mean, cell phones can also do 4K 60, but there's a reason big cameras still exist. Now, having said that, I think both cameras have perfectly fine image quality for what they are designed to do. But you will absolutely get more versatility out of the M50. Stabilization is crazy important for video though, and the M50 only has a weak electronic image stabilizing system, not like the GoPro Hero 7, but the gimbal on the Osmo Pocket is legit. It is the thing that DJI has on lock, so you know it's going to be good and it does not disappoint. But don't take my word for it, let's hop outside real quick for the tried and true vlogging test. <laughs> The vlogging test. Now, we are actually back in the crucible today, which was not the plan. The rest of the video will be shot somewhere else, but one of us, you know, probably me, right? Uh, forgot the SD card on the M50, so we had to run back real quick uh, before we wasted the entire day because it's beautiful outside. But that's enough. Let's get to the vlogging test of the Osmo Pocket versus the Canon M50. And yeah, uh, the reason I'm treating these like vlogging cameras together, and I'm sure we've already talked about this, is if you consider how much it will cost you to buy the Osmo Pocket and get the accessories that allow you to connect things like a microphone and a tripod, it's about the same price. So let's see what you get for vlogging purposes. Vlogging test begin. Whoa. Okay, so this is the vlogging test of the Canon M50 versus the DJI Osmo Pocket. Now, some of the things you'll notice, the Canon M50 does not have in-body image stabilization, while the Osmo Pocket is a gimbal. You know, it's a gimbal. However, the lens, the kit lens for the Canon M50 does have stabilization built into it. It does have electronic image stabilization, which we do not have turned on, because I don't really find that it does too well, but they're both set to auto. Look at that. How well are they both gonna compensate with the sun out of nowhere? <laughs> but another thing, the Canon M50 has a microphone in jack, you know, like standard built into it. That's pretty important. It's got the flip screen. And since they both have a depth of field, which we will talk about more here in fiddliness, uh, having good autofocus is extremely important. And the Canon has the class leading dual pixel autofocus, whereas the Osmo Pocket is rocking a contrast based autofocus system, which, you know, sorry, it's not as good. And I have missed focus on the, uh, the Osmo Pocket before, which kind of sucks. Okay, but this is the audio coming out of the Osmo Pocket. Audio test one, two, three. Audio test one, two, three. And this is the audio out of the M50 in the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which you may say is not fair, but have an audio jack and then I would use the same thing. Oh, I fell in that hole again. <laughs> have an audio jack and then we wouldn't have to worry about it. Okay, vlogging test complete. <laughs> okay, and this is an indoor low light slash studio test of the two cameras. So this is the exact same setting this is the exact same setup that you just saw with the uh, mystery camera that we've been trying out. Try to guess what it is. I do have the Canon, this is the Canon M50 and this is the Osmo Pocket. I do have them set, I have the Canon M50 with the kit lens set as wide as possible and I think it's still a little tighter than how wide the Osmo Pocket is. The Osmo Pocket has face tracking on, which again is the most legitimate part of it. I have the Osmo Pocket set to 4K, I have the Canon M50 set to 1080p, so maybe you can see a difference between the 4K or the 1080p. Maybe you can't. This video will be uploaded in 4K 30 frames per second, but this is the video quality difference. Either way, here's the image quality. It looks pretty darn good, so I do have it plugged into the phone so I can actually see, because they're so far away that I couldn't see the little screen when I tried doing it. Uh, but it looks pretty, the image quality looks pretty good on my phone. The image quality on the Canon looks pretty good too. They're both set to auto mode, nothing has been changed, and this is the exact same lighting you just saw. Okay. Forget to track my face. Track my face. Oh, you lost my face. Nope, you got my face. Yep, you got it. Oh, you lost it, you got me. You lost it, you got me. Can I lose you? Can I lose you? Can I? Nope, you got me, you got, okay. That face tracking is pretty good. <laughs> okay, back to the video. I'm, you're too far away for me to do that. Here's, here's what the arm transition looks like when you're not by the camera. 
I'm sure I'm a T-Rex. <laughs> okay, back to the video. <laughs> and now it's time for the most important aspect of a camera to me and to other online content creators, fiddliness. Fiddliness is how much do I have to mess with the camera to get the footage out of it that I want. And there's two, whoa, almost dropped it. And there's two parts to fiddliness. There's fiddliness before you hit record and there's fiddliness after you hit record. And both of these cameras, so the M50 and the DJI Osmo Pocket, I mean, they're pretty easy to get set up. The M50 obviously is more of a standard like mirrorless DSLR style camera. You have access to a bunch more physical buttons and you got that awesome touch screen that allows you to dial everything in like you want. The Osmo Pocket though, once you have it set up, like if you plug it into your phone, you set it up the way you want, you don't really have to mess with it ever again. So if you get it set to how you like, it's really easy to use once you get that first part done. I mean, that's, again, I, who did I give crap to? I gave crap to a company for that. Oh, it was GoPro. It's a very easy to use LCD touchscreen that is made even easier because there are no meaningful settings that you can change inside of this camera. You can't change the resolution. You can't change the width of the shot. You can't turn on ProTune. I guess that is one way to do better at ease of use is you just make sure there's less things that the camera can do. Touche. For the Hero 7 White, I guess if you take buttons away, it makes it even easier, right? Well, sometimes, especially when it's like a new thing and you're not taking functionality away from it, it's not always a bad thing. But what about after you hit record? So this isn't even a contest. We Like we mentioned on the Wednesday video with the GoPro Hero 7 Black, the Osmo Pocket, surprisingly enough for such a small censored camera, is not infinity focus, so everything in the shot is not in focus. It actually has a depth of field, and it has autofocus built in, but that autofocus is contrast-based, and it's not yet dialed in perfectly. I've missed focus on shots using this thing, which I don't, I don't really understand that. At least give us an option for infinity focus uh, until you get your uh, autofocus system set up. So when you are using it, you might have to, and it's even, it's really hard to see if you have your focus nailed on this teeny tiny little screen here. That is definitely a negative when it comes to fiddliness after record. The M50 on the other hand also has a depth of field because it has a it has a sensor about the size of the camera of the uh, the Osmo Pocket. However, it's got Canon's dual pixel autofocus, so as long, if you're vlogging or you're talking to yourself, you don't really have to worry about it. You just need to like glance over, is the little autofocus box in my face? Okay, excellent. It's good to go. And again, I don't consider that to be a bridge too far because as we've already mentioned, yes, the Osmo Pocket is 350 bucks against the $500 that I got this for. But once you include the accessory kit to get some more functionality out of this, you're really coming up against 500 bucks. So why, I don't know that I would get this as a vlogging camera over this, but that's, we got plenty more complaining about that to come. Back to the video. And we're back. Lastly, but much more seriously in a comparison like this, ecosystem. And this is what really differentiates between a single use camera and an interchangeable lens system. The ecosystem for the Osmo Pocket will give you some interesting capabilities. There will be a wireless adapter that will allow you for phone control while away from the camera, an add-on that will give you a GoPro style mount to the back because it doesn't mount to a tripod standard, which sucks. DJI, and others that will increase its functionality, but those, like everything, come at a cost. And that cost will bump you up to a bigger camera like this, and the straight up ecosystem of the M50 does allow for more lenses, cages, etc., but it also has an adapter that allows access to Canon's full lens lineup. And that is one of the largest lens selections on the planet Earth. And that's where the real big difference is. The Osmo Pocket, in my opinion, is more of a niche one function camera that for me is currently being done just fine by my cell phone and in tough cases by my GoPro. Whereas the M50 has the usability and can be like your main regular camera. So what, right? So which one should you choose as your vlogging camera? This is actually the most intriguing video of this entire series to me because the Osmo Pocket does something that almost nothing else can do. It is a standalone, crazy stable video camera that does a very nice 4K image in good lighting. It doesn't look like you're recording anything, has decent audio, and can do some awesome tracking shots if you are a one person crew. But I would not recommend this as somebody's only camera. Heck, I'd recommend using your cell phone before investing in this if this is all you'd have. If you are looking at upping your production value here on YouTube or another online place, I would save up and invest in something like the M50. It gives you the ability to get a very nice 1080p image that can work both indoors and outdoors, gives you the ability to add a microphone to the camera, super important, 
and gives you the awesome autofocus that means that you never have to worry about your footage being in focus or not. But if you do have that covered, if you've already got an M50 or another main camera, and you want something that's pretty darn fun to use, then yeah, get the Osmo Pocket. It might be one of the most fun cameras I've used this year. Thanks for watching.